Hi there and welcome back to my channel, Fotaku here, your photography otaku, and today I wanted to speak about the recent release of the Marvels in cinemas. Now the movie is better than the first Captain Marvel movie. I had fun, but it feels more so because of the group that I went to the movie with. Had I gone to see it alone, I probably would not have had as good of a time, and especially because the turnout in the theater that I went to watch it in was relatively low. And that, that kind of is a shame, because I feel that audiences would have had more fun with this movie than Captain Marvel. But I know that the lack of uh, attendance is probably more the result of how things are currently being handled with Disney Marvel at the moment. The sh complete turnout of shows and movies at the rate of what you're doing is clearly showing a lack of quality control. And I believe that there's a lot of people that are finding it not the most uh, important or pressing thing to keep up with the movies than say how things had left off since the end of Endgame. And it probably hasn't really helped out with how a lot of people need to have Disney Plus in order to have been keeping up with the latest movies and shows that would sometimes share uh, equivalency in terms of release. There had been some other theatrical releases that had done well, such as with Spider-Man No Way Home and the third Guardians of the Galaxy movie, but everything else has just been a little hit or miss. And I feel like the shows were definitely stronger at the very beginning than necessarily the later ones that we were starting to receive. And, uh, you know, just like even before going in to see the Marvels, you would have needed to have kept up with uh, WandaVision, Miss Marvel, and apparently the uh, Secret Invasion was also necessary before going into it, but I kind of feel like not much of that movie is brought up in, uh, or rather that show is brought up in the Marvels. And as for the first Captain Marvel, there's a whole flashback sequence that pretty much clips most of the movie together. Though, you know, there's still some necessary context coming from that movie before getting into this one. I kind of feel that maybe more should have been done in terms of flashbacking to uh, material such as even Miss Marvel, since I believe that show didn't have nearly as a as much uh, people watching as, say, WandaVision at the beginning. And then also, uh, a lot of people still went to see Captain Marvel. It was right in between the release of Infinity War and Endgame. And uh, a lot of people, some toxic, but they were more so, I'm not sure, upset at Brie Larson for some reason. But there were a good amount of people that felt like that movie wasn't as necessarily necessary going into Endgame as it felt like it was supposed to. If anything, Ant-Man and the Wasp was more important, though that one being more of a light-hearted comedy movie, especially following Infinity War, had more importance or significance with the use of the Quantum Realm for the time heist, and it felt like all that Captain Marvel really did in, in Endgame was just help to uh, limit the numbers of Thanos' uh, forces. So I kind of uh, believe that there was probably a lot that was going to hurt the attendance of Miss Marvel. And uh, it, it is a shame. There, there was definitely some heart behind this one. And I feel a lot more efforts were done to try and make it work. But unfortunately, due to the uh, anticipated reception or the low attendance probably of this one, it, it really feels very rushed. Uh, even the runtime is currently at an hour and 45 minutes. So just, just overall probably a, a big missed opportunity and also probably just looking at just how the reception has been for... Captain Marvel, as well as overall just the current state of the MCU. The plot this time around centers around the new antagonist Darben, who's planning to use another bracelet similar to the one that Camilla Khan has in order to restore the Creed to its former glory. In order to do so, she needs to find the secondary bracelet, is one of the first things that we're led to be is the major goal. Uh, and during this time, she starts jumping through the galaxy, which is leaving little ripples around it, which 
causes uh, Captain Marvel to investigate, leading her to touch one of these gates, whereas at the same time, elsewhere near Earth, Monica Rambo decides to touch this gate at the same time. Suddenly back at Earth, you have Camilla Khan, whose bracelet just starts to uh, shine at the exact same moment, connecting them all together and causing whenever one or the other uses their powers, at least both at the exact same time, to switch places with one another. And once the uh, Earthbound superheroes all learn necessarily how to control their powers together, or rather just when they get a grips of what's going on, there is a nice montage later where they actually try to play around with this in order to be more prepared to fight their foes. They soon realize that they have to stop Darben, who's starting to use the other bracelet in order to steal resources from planets that Captain Marvel has assisted in the past in order to restore the planet of the Kree. So it, there was already a little bit of backtracking, so it didn't really feel like the hunt was for the MacGuffin. The hunt was more so for the resources. This time around, it seems like the actions of Captain Marvel have greatly affected the status of other characters. So it tries to make the Kree, or at least the majority of them, feel more, uh, more like uh, characters that we should sympathize with for all the destruction that they've had to dealt with at the hands of Miss Marvel. Probably a little weird since it feels like the Kree were always painted as like a antagonistic force in most of the Marvel movies, but overall it's not bad. If anything, it's good whenever you have something that's morally ambiguous, but generally the uh, enemy is just very specific to Captain Marvel's past. And the banter though is very fun with the characters whenever the uh, script is allowed to just kind of breathe and we're allowed to take in the interactions between Camilla Khan, Monica, and uh, Man, I've been saying Captain Marvel so much. Uh, Carol Danvers. And so um, Like those parts are fun, but the plot moves very fast and there are some aspects to their interactions within the planets uh, those being a uh, scroll planet, which was kind of weird because that already feels like it contradicts the events of Secret Invasion. A water planet that has a bunch of people that have to sing in order to communicate. And the use of the sun from the same solar system as Earth. So all this is to say very direct in terms of how it's supposed to be affecting Carol. And I think that that's really interesting. Like there's definitely a good arc that's occurring here in terms of how she wants to redeem herself. But ultimately there's so much going on that I felt like that's the best way for me to condense the main plot of it. And I still feel like I'm a little everywhere with my explanation. So I feel like there could have been more time for it to cook, but overall, like I enjoy it more than the first Captain Marvel movie. And I, I really like the, uh, uh, it's not, there's not really like a post credits or so. I would say like a mid credit scene, and then also just the ending of the movie was very cute, especially with the cameos that they have in there. But overall, I don't know, it, it's kind of hard to like just straight up say go and watch it right away in theaters i kind of wish that uh there just would have been more time in order to let the uh movie be fully fleshed out though if you are a fan of captain marvel if you're a fan of uh monica rambo's photon or uh camilla khan's miss marvel uh i think you'll have a good time uh, i think you'll have a good time for the most part the characters are still relatively the same as to what you would have expected from prior properties and i feel like you definitely get a lot more of carol danvers in this movie so um yeah overall i'm, I'm not sure what to rate it exactly i, I feel like i want to put it at a seven but it's like missing a bit i feel like there's individual parts that really make it better than the whole or am i saying that the individual bits are better than the whole it's it's a little hard to say but uh if you did go see the movie what did you think of it would you rate around the same do you think it's better uh feel free to comment below and uh, thank you again for watching please uh like share subscribe hit the bell notification for when i have more of these uh reviews out and i'll definitely see you in the next one bye <laughs>